Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. As you look around the island, there is no doubt that the recovery is already underway. And as you're going to hear shortly, and as we plan for the past year, Discover Puerto Rico is driving demand and preparing to welcome back our visitors at a pace that's far outstepping our competitors and producing clear signs that our approach is paying off. So as we're gonna share with you today, our advertising and promotional activations are resulting in expanded reach and engagement, an improved booking pace and significant gains in perception and likelihood of booking by meeting planners. Our publicity strategies have positioned our destination as a leader in the emerging recovery with exceptional results. And our sales efforts are driving very positive results in both leisure and meeting and convention sales. And we've done all of this despite a pretty significant reduction in our budget. But we all know that our work is far from over. Today, we'll share the path that continues building on this momentum. Our great recovery playbook is different from any other disaster recovery plan we've put together. And we have assembled several of them. Uh, we're going to walk you through the process today, and we'll share the document in its entirety tomorrow. But first, to also welcome you, I'd like to pass the proverbial mic to the chairman of Discover Puerto Rico's board of directors, Peco Suarez. Uh, buenos dias to all, and uh, glad to be pinch hitting on behalf of uh, our CEO, Brad Lee, who could not join us today. And uh, I'd take a moment to congratulate uh, Discover Puerto Rico's team for this great initiative. Um, this core Puerto Rico has developed and, and today we'll be sharing with you a forward-looking, results-driven, data-led roadmap guiding the Puerto Rico tourism industry's path to recovery. The Great Recovery Playbook addresses how the DMO's early actions at the start of the pandemic helped manage this disruption and mitigate COVID-19's impact on the tourism industry, nimbly steering the destination from restoration to rebound to rising above expectations for 2021 and beyond. Today's presentation and subsequent document examines how the DMO's proactive approach, acting quickly and decisively during a period of turbulent uncertainty has positioned the island to rebound. Most importantly, the recovery roadmap focuses on a milestone method outlining measurable non-timed benchmarks, monitored closely to trigger and guide the DMO's responses and activity across marketing, sales, and communication channels. Despite the devastating impact of the pandemic, the sole purpose of this roadmap is to guide our industry forward beyond just a recovery, but growing and rising even higher than the previous high water marks established by Discover Puerto Rico. Thank you all, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I pass it on back to you, Leah. Awesome. Thanks, Peco. To guide our conversation today, first you'll hear from Alicia Valentine, our Director of Research and Analytics, who will present our data-first approach to recovery. I will then follow up with details on the current situation and the planned road ahead. And finally, we'll have an active discussion with our key agency partners who helped guide the development of our roadmap. Amberly Engel from r, r Partners, Nate Huff from Miles Partnership, and Sarah Garibaldi from Ketchum. For now, I'll turn the presentation over to Alicia. Thanks, Leah. Good morning. So given Puerto Rico's unique position as an island destination, we're of course reliant on air and cruise visitors. So the territory was impacted both more quickly and more severely than the rest of the US. In addition, Puerto Rico was the first state or territory to issue any lockdowns from COVID-19. So many of the measures were more severe than implemented elsewhere with the strict stay-at-home orders and closures that included outdoor rec recreation. However, our current research points to a quick climb into recovery. Starting in mid-February, Puerto Rico's hotel occupancy surpassed the U.S. average and has held there for the past six weeks. For the most recent reporting week ending March 20th, hotel occupancy was 76%, which not only is on par with pre-pandemic volume, but nearly where we were at the same time in 2019 which we know is a record year for visitation and spending. So while many destinations across the US are starting to see an uptick in travel, Puerto Rico has seen a quick ascent. Certainly pent up de demand and vaccine distribution is contributing to this. But throughout the pandemic, consumers have said they want a beach destination. 
And given the current restrictions on international travel, Puerto Rico is uniquely positioned to capture a large market share. In recent years, we know there'd been a significant shift in lodging supply and demand in Puerto Rico. Independent rentals now make up 35% of lodging supply and before COVID made up 29% of demand. The independent rental market in Puerto Rico remained pretty strong throughout 2020, given the limitations on travel. And though it makes up a significantly smaller portion of supply, the rental demand last year was only 5% lower than the previous year. And because of this, both rentals and hotels will play an important role in Puerto Rico's recovery. Through the remainder of the fiscal year, hotels are booking nearly two thirds faster than the same time a year ago. And while that was in the early days of COVID, this is far better than any other competitors are seeing. And for the same time period, rentals are booking nearly 100% where they, above where they were in mid-March 2020. This increase in lodging demand is unique in the industry and a strong indicator to Puerto Rico's quick recovery. This strong booking pace is confirmed by data from Adora, which looks at online search and booking activity. In the most recent week for which we have data, Puerto Rico is seeing a very different recovery than other Caribbean and US destinations. The chart on the left shows Puerto Rico's bookings as tracked by Adara. The chart in the middle is the Caribbean and Mexico and the chart on the right is the US average. In this time series, it's clear that yes, other destinations are beginning to see a recovery, but nothing like the pace of Puerto Rico. And of course, we began to see a dramatic shift in activity when Discover Puerto Rico was able to begin placing paid media with the funding from the CARES Act. Especially notable is that the data we use from Adara to track bookings by consumers shows that the average hotel rate by those exposed to Discover Puerto Rico marketing since the beginning of the year was $290, which is 41% higher than the average hotel rate year to date. The strong turnaround since the beginning of 2021 is attributable to both consumer sentiment surrounding COVID-19 and a preference for initial travel experiences like Puerto Rico offers. Of course, since early 21, there's been a dramatic decline in COVID cases. And the New York, New York Times reports that as of this morning, while there's been a 60% decline in cases since the beginning of the year, now 29% of the US population has at least one dose of the vaccine. However, this includes children under 18 who are not yet eligible. So for the adult population over 18, the CDC reports that it's 32% of the population that's been vaccinated. And given this distribution pace, we could have half of the popula population vaccinated in May and 70% by mid-July. In last week's coronavirus travel sentiment from destination analysts finds that those that are traveling now, nearly 40% have been vaccinated up from just 24% a month ago. So with this, we know that those who are traveling are more often vaccinated than average US adult population. And given that vaccine distribution had been rolled out by age, destination analyst is showing that it's baby boomers and older adults who are most open to travel marketing. This weekly consumer sentiment research finds that being quarantined through a year long pandemic will have long-term impacts on travel. Destination analyst finds that nearly 60% think that the pandemic has changed their outlook on life overall, with 20% saying that it's been significant. And as a result, 50% say they will put more effort into visiting places on their travel bucket list in the next few years. And Puerto Rico is well positioned for how consumers anticipate they will change their travel behavior, preferring not only beaches, but also outdoors, mountains, and small towns. So when asked how the pandemic had changed their options and opinions of the types of destinations they want to visit for leisure, nearly 42% said yes to at least some degree. For beaches, national parks, and outdoor destinations, this is welcome news. And you'll see that those that are urban entertainment and theme park focused will face greater challenges to recovery as nearly 45% of travelers report they're less likely to visit these places because of the pandemic. And of course, after weeks of declines in new cases, the New York Times is reporting that there has been a slight increase in cases over the last 14 days, as many states and communities are starting to lift restrictions, including mask requirements. 
But consumers remain eager to travel. And with the passage of the Rescue Act, Americans are starting to see pandemic stimulus checks in their bank accounts and mailboxes, which we anticipate will continue to push travel demand higher. This nation analyst finds that over half of American travelers believe that they'd receive some form of stimulus payment and that travel does look to benefit from this injection of money with over a third saying that they're expecting to spend some of their stimulus check checks on travel and that it's more prevalent among millennial travelers who are twice as likely as those boomers um, to spend their stimulus dollars on travel. And finally, after what has essentially been a year long shutdown of the industry, it's with relief that the most recent research from Longwoods International shows that 87% of consumers have plans to travel in the next six months back to where we were pre-pandemic. However, Discover Puerto Rico isn't just looking to get the industry back to where we were pre-pandemic. Yes, 2019 was a record setting year, but with the kind of product consumers want in this moment, along with the federal resources to message to consumers when they are most open to travel inspiration, Puerto Rico is poised to see the industry exceed those records. With that, I'll turn it over to Chief Marketing Officer, Leah. Thank you so much, Alicia. In the nearly three years that Discover Puerto Rico has been operating, we have been no stranger to challenges. From hurricanes to earthquakes and now COVID-19, our commitment remains the same. Growing the visitor economy, supporting local businesses, and marketing our destination to the world. Recovery does not end until hotels are full, restaurants are busy, attractions are operating at full capacity, and each and every one of those 86,000 jobs our industry sustains have returned. That's our goal and that's our mission and it's our commitment to you and to our island. It's no secret that COVID-19 took a sledgehammer to the travel and tourism industry globally. To recover from the devastating impact of the pandemic, we must continue implementing a compelling strategy bringing travel and tourism back to our island. Fortunately, opportunity is on the horizon. And as Alicia shared, the door to Puerto Rico's great recovery appears to be swinging open. The Great Recovery Plan is built to be nimble, sustainable, and most importantly, it's measurable. Beyond simply restoring visitor spending to pre-pandemic levels, we need to go further, growing and evolving our visitor base. And this growth has to be inclusionary. And because Puerto Rico has suffered significant setbacks prior to the pandemic, we also need to recover more quickly than our competitors. These are very lofty goals, trust me. Um, but by working collaboratively with island leaders, our industry partners and residents, the great recovery is within our grasp. Some say there is no playbook. We've heard this many times throughout the pandemic and we simply don't believe it. Discover Puerto Rico has created one and we're making recovery a reality. At the beginning of the pandemic and throughout, other destinations went completely dark or at best, they provided lists of takeout restaurants for locals and virtual Zoom backgrounds. But Discover Puerto Rico's strategy paired reactionary tactics with responsible but aggressive actions to generate awareness and desire for the destination through earned, owned, and paid tactics that evolved steadily over the past 12 months based on changing conditions. These efforts are already demonstrating their impact in the data showing Puerto Rico outpacing both Caribbean and mainland destinations. Everything we did in 2020 was not only proactive, but was anchored in a recovery mindset. This ensured that we made sound strategic decisions amid an ever-changing landscape that would benefit us over the long term. These quick, decisive actions conserved our resources and prioritized key relationships with meeting and event planners, travel agents, and our strategic partners. Additionally, we developed ongoing messaging that balanced destination information with inspiration. At the onset, our direction was straightforward. Position the destination as leading by example with transparency, accountability, and timeliness of information. We clarified any potential um, inaccuracies or misinformation with travelers, media, meeting planners, and travel advisors very urgently. We adapted and enacted our pre-planned airborne illness scenario from our very robust crisis playbook to prevent, uh, to take preventative action ahead of time. 
And we focused heavily on keeping the industry updated constantly. You're probably sick of how many emails you're getting from us by now, but we continuously updated those media and group statements, the traveler FAQ, the industry portal, while sending frequent and consistent industry e-blasts to inform on the latest measures in place, all of the revised messaging and actions that the DMO was taking to accurately represent the situation on the island. We paused paid media while strict travel restrictions were in place, but we stayed active on social media and through earned media while continuing to pivot uh, to digital engagements with meeting planners and travel advisors. As the global situation escalated, we responsibly evolved our messaging and activations to acknowledge the circumstances while ensuring that Puerto Rico stayed top of mind. The goal was to position Puerto Rico as a leader in containment and the forthcoming recovery through swift action and the implementation of strict guidelines and mandates for locals and current visitors who were actually on the island at the time. This involved closely monitoring consumer perception and activating what we think were really cool ideas that truly met travelers where they were, dreaming about travel to our island and eventually taking steps to research and plan. It was also critical to stay active in our social channels and even in search engine marketing, never leaving our industry or our visitors or clients in the dark. To put it pretty succinctly, the proactive recovery mindset we adopted and implemented in 2020 was key to prepare Discover Puerto Rico to lead right now in this moment. The impact COVID-19 has, uh, has been seen around the world with every country facing varying circumstances and deploying different responses to the containment of the virus. Every country's tourism prospects are unique. Today, some countries are open for business while others are effectively shuttered. This hodgepodge of travel restrictions plays in Puerto Rico's favor as potential travelers, especially American citizens, are looking for travel destinations with easy to understand policies. Similar to the global situation, the Caribbean has deployed a mishmash of strategies from some barring US travelers to a wide variety of pre-travel protocols. Most travelers find the rules onerous and thus they dismiss those destinations. Add to this that roughly 60% of Americans don't even have a passport. While travel and gathering restrictions vary from state to state, overall, Americans are generally free to travel within the country. Urban destinations across the country, especially those with meetings, conventions, and sports events are a primary source of visitation, are expected to struggle well into 2022. Destinations that appeal more to leisure travelers are expected to see their recovery begin in the second half of 2021, but not return to pre-COVID-19 levels for, at best, another year, assuming COVID-19 numbers continue to fall and vaccinations continue to increase. As Alicia mentioned, beach and resort destinations that saw strong visitation in 2020 will likely maintain that pace going forward. All of these factors contribute to a very favorable environment for Puerto Rico to emerge as the powerhouse destination in the Caribbean. Taking a quick step back, when we look at uh, our unique position as an island destination and how we were impacted more quickly and severely than the rest of the US, it's important to understand that how those, implement, uh, those measures and implementations that we made early on, including the strict stay at home orders, and closures really benefit us as a destination. Because of the specific challenges facing Puerto Rico compared to other destinations, it was really critical that the DMO act decisively. As the ramifications of an extended pandemic became clear, Discover Puerto Rico reduced operating expenses. We reduced compensation uh, with our staff, implemented furloughs and froze business travel and hiring. For those employees who remained, we reassigned duties and responsibilities to maintain a very high degree of responsiveness and service. These proactive measures were undertaken to enable recovery when the time was right. However, now as we re-enter the marketplace, Discover Puerto Rico is operating with only 25% of the funding we had a year ago. Likewise, our business development fund, which is used to incentivize group business, has not been funded at all posing a major impediment to recovering the island's meeting and incentive business. While we're using federal funds to supplement our budget in the very short term, those funds won't last into the next fiscal year. For there to be a true recovery, the Puerto Rican government must make 
Discover Puerto Rico's funding a priority as we continue to be outspent by regional players and very competitive DMOs. Despite all early indicators, giving Puerto Rico the regional advantage, underspending relative to competitors will forfeit our lead. So something we have to be cognizant of. It's important to note that investment levels directly impact the pace of the recovery too. Projections of a full recovery in 12 to eight months depend on a 50 to $60 million investment level, which is twice the current investment level of Discover Puerto Rico. Put another way, continued investment at the current level will prolong the recovery by several years, as you see in this uh, visual. So even as we plan to overcome the challenges ahead, we are still limited to by some past problems that have yet to be addressed. We'll continue to identify destination assets that require renovation and reopening to reclaim prior record levels of visitation and advocate for the Puerto Rican government to move aggressively to assist these assets. While the lodging product continues to evolve in response to consumer demand, as Alicia alluded to, the mix of rentals and hotels is still influenced by the damage to lodging inventory caused by hurricanes and earthquakes of the past. The damage done by Hurricane Maria is still not reconciled 100% and issues from room inventory and attractions not yet online to capacity restrictions limit the recovery efforts until fully restored. As travel advisor and meeting planner sentiment continues to improve based on vaccine distribution and the loosening of restrictions, we're seeing increased activity in future bookings and requests for proposals. To boost lead volume and maintain pre-pandemic conversion percentages, we will prioritize our efforts to those buyers with confirmed travel dates and meeting needs most effectively. And of course, cruising is critical. COVID-19 has laid waste to all cruise industry projections for 2020 and 2021 for the most part. The impact has been especially harmful to the cruise industry as a result of negative media at the onset of the pandemic, causing the CDC to issue a no-sale order for ships sailing in U.S. territorial waters. The no-sale order has since been replaced by what is a very complex conditional sale order that has kept the industry <clears throat> at a standstill. With the U.S. temporarily out of the equation and vaccine programs providing optimism, North American cruise lines have started to focus on where they will be permitted to sail, and Caribbean has become the obvious choice. If this positive trajectory is maintained, we're hopeful that San Juan might see home port opportunities in late 2021. But we don't expect meaningful deployments to the Caribbean until mid to late 2022 and into 2023. The good news is that there's tremendous demand in the space. Sales for cruises in late 2021, 22, and beyond are at pre-pandemic levels and in some cases even higher. As the impact from COVID-19 continues to decline and immunity levels continue to rise, we are poised for a great recovery. We have a great opportunity. The number of travelers over the age of 65 who have received their vaccinations and are eager to travel is growing very quickly. Indications from professional meeting planners suggest that the second half of 2021 will see hybrid meetings with a hopeful return to in-person conventions in 2022 when on-site conferences can be safely staged. All of this activity is prepping the landscape for visitors who are anxiously waiting for the signal to travel again after a year of dreaming big. Strong indicators of early recovery, coupled with growing consumer confidence and desire to travel, set Puerto Rico up as a destination to cater to a new and expanded travel market. As you saw from Alicia's data, Discover Puerto Rico has been aggressively building its intel into the mindset of those future visitors, monitoring their readiness to travel and their interest in experiencing something new. The depth of research is allowing us to engage our target markets with pinpoint accuracy to attract conscientious travelers. As we continue seeing cases fall and travel advisories loosen, it's clear we're entering the rebound phase of our journey to recovery. Using research to guide marketing efforts, timing, and drive responsible travel messaging, we, won't, we want to ensure we don't abandon what's been working. So expect to see the DMO continue building on this responsible traveler target adapting and evolving to grow our audience base of those visitors most likely to follow health and safety restrictions and guidelines, as well as demonstrate respectable behavior. 
We'll continue monitoring and adjusting target markets based on our selection formula that prioritizes seat capacity from airlines and declining COVID cases, among several other factors. Along with implementing a robust media and communication strategy that's already developed and is scalable based on available funds, we'll inject additional funds as available across the entire marketing and sales matrix to make a significant impact and broadcast Puerto Rico's readiness for leisure and business visitors. We'll use earned media to position Puerto Rico as significantly in advanced in terms of readiness compared to our competitive set based on strict containment measures. We'll amplify Puerto Rico's readiness in relation to past examples of resiliency and strong comebacks despite past challenges. We'll be activating a new creative campaign that builds on consumers' pent up demand for travel, implementing robust fan plans that have already been established to bring in top tier journalists, meeting planners and travel advisors, We'll activate destination promotions in both leisure and the group segments, as well as implement meetings media plans as the budget allows to deliver, deliver promotions to the appropriate targets. And of course, all of this has to be implemented much earlier than all other destinations. So we've got a good jump start. Despite the devastation of the pandemic, the crisis offers an opportunity to really rethink how tourism interacts with our economy society, resources, and our infrastructure building and transitioning to an even more resilient tourism economy. Beyond just recovery, we can guide our entire industry forward and achieve even greater successes than those already established by Discover Puerto Rico. Our goal for 2021 is to help stabilize the island's economy through tourism and drive visitor powered employment and revenue to new records. This includes surpassing 2019 visitation records, increasing ADR, and attracting, as I mentioned, a more conscientious traveler. Coming out of the pandemic, travelers want, more than anything, to reconnect with the world outside their own homes. We're seeing many, many middle and upper class Americans have actually saved money during the pandemic, putting them in a better financial position to satisfy that ache for new travel opportunities. These consumers are looking for more meaningful travel, not just relaxation and luxury, but cultural encounters that broaden their horizons and create unique, unforgettable experiences. And Puerto Rico is the prime example of the type of destination these travelers are seeking, and this relationship can be mutually beneficial. This audience is not only desirable to us from a financial standpoint, but also will help maintain the beauty and spirit of our island. In the early stages of recovery, Puerto Rico was the first to implement a responsible traveler strategy, specifically focusing on those who would follow safety regulations and respect local mandates. This has allowed us to build a more sustainable tourism product beyond the pandemic and into the future by providing intentional and meaningful experiences to a more conscientious traveler who seeks to support the rich culture and history of the destination while they're having their travel experience. The uncertain nature of the challenges that we face requires a plan that, as I said earlier, is nimble, it's sustainable and measurable. Unforeseen surges in infection rates, new and more contagious variants, variants or any number of developments may require us to adjust our efforts in real time. This forward-looking, results-driven approach builds on our current momentum to propel the island towards the comeback Puerto Rico needs and deserves. The complexity of this environment demands a completely new approach to our recovery playbook. So we developed a milestone method, as we're calling it, that outlines measurable, non-timed benchmarks that will activate triggers and guide the DMO's response activity across marketing, communication, and sales channels. This method differs from our previous planning process that was focused on calendar-based activity and included seasonal travel and events. The milestone method is focused on key travel variables, visitor volume and overall business impact to inform our strategy and our next milestone phases. Additionally, it will help guard our messaging and activity across all marketing channels, such as our website, public relations, media, and sales. By identifying these key moments, we can gauge marketing and communication activities in a highly responsive and adaptable way. In summary, the plan relies on key milestones that 
trigger asynchronous action plans and benchmarks rather than strict sequential openings. Here you'll see just two examples we've re extracted from the recovery matrix to demonstrate our approach. You'll be able to view each milestone and corresponding activity and KPI in the full document that will be shared tomorrow via email and will also be available on our industry portal. An important component of the milestone-based approach is the ability to adjust and react to conditions as they happen in messaging, across audiences, and across channels. Key milestones, for example, the CDC guideline changing, uh, decreasing levels of infection and increasing incidence of vaccinations will inform these shifts, such as incrementally increasing the reach and frequency of marketing through a phased approach. Moving forward, our goal is to meet or exceed 2019 numbers for key metrics such as airport arrivals, dispersion, occupancy, hotel and rental, and revenue to stabilize the island's economy and in 2022 drive visitor-powered employment and revenue to new records. Tourism has the potential to be a vibrant economic engine for Puerto Rico. Over the past half decade, a series of very unforeseen events has intervened to block us from, from what I call our true destiny as a top tier global destination. This post COVID-19 world is our opportunity to seize our birthright and discover Puerto Rico is committed to enabling the tourism sector to not only survive this crisis, but to rebuild and strengthen for the future. This concludes the presentation portion of the webinar. So thanks for sticking with us this long. Um, for the next few minutes, I want to welcome our amazing partners and contributors to our recovery plan representing R&R partners, Ketchum and Miles. You've seen these faces before. Um, welcome to the panel. And I wanna kick off with a few questions. Let somebody else talk for uh, a few minutes. Um, each of your agencies have travel specific clients ranging from DMOs to hotels and other travel brands. So I wanted to ask from an agency perspective, what have you seen other destinations doing as the world emerges from, from COVID that would be either wise to emulate or wise for Discover Puerto Rico um, to avoid? So Sarah, you're, you're the first on my screen, so I'll, I'll start with you. I think you're on mute. It had to be someone. <laughs> I'll kick off with being that first then. So what we started to see is that there is a huge opportunity and a lot of destinations and travel brands are taking advantage of it to reimagine travel together as a global tourism industry. You know, we're all starting to realize that there is an opportunity to build better tourism in this post COVID world. And Puerto Rico has a huge opportunity to almost introduce a new island and a new destination. So beyond just tapping into the pent up demand of all consumers, and we all know there's this new found appreciation for nature, for outdoors, and many destinations will be tapping into that. But Leah, you alluded to it earlier. There is a huge desire to truly ensure that your, your time is quality coming out of the pandemic and that every experience is not an experience wasted and every dollar as well. You know, consumers gave a lot up in the past year. So every single choice uh, will be heavily thought out, including very choiceful vacation choices. And they're also willing to indulge a bit more. So ensuring that we package up our offerings to meet the demand of this new, more astute traveler who will have many competing choices and will ensure that they're making very like determined decisions about where they choose to travel will be key. And we're starting to see a lot of destinations already think about that and get ahead of it. Great input. Thank you. Um, Nate, anything to build on? Um, well, Sarah kind of stole my build back better emphasis that I was going to put in there. Um, but I think the other uh, other piece that's been interesting that, that I think can be built on, I've seen other destinations do, is the connection between the visitor economy and, and the halo effect of how that impacts so many other businesses. It was really um, made obvious in so many different places coming out of this. So I think uh, when we look at building back better, it, it has to do with more than just the type of visitor that we're looking at. It also has to do with 
how DMOs are able to kind of harness that momentum and the support from local industry and the recognition of the value that tourism creates really beyond what we traditionally think of as tourism facing businesses. Um, I do think there's some things out of this that I've seen uh, not necessarily done as well um, that we want to avoid. And so far, uh, Puerto Rico is doing a good job of that. And, and that starts with like rate cutting deals and packaging. I think that that sense of desperation and need for visitation is, is very understood after the year plus that we've experienced. But ultimately, as Alicia was uh, alluding to, and as you talked about, the desire, willingness, and finances are there for travel. So now is not the time to set a new low bar. Um, the other thing I would note is many destinations did not retire the sad piano music soon enough. So well after consumers were ready to be looking more optimistic, there's still a lot of creative messaging out there that um, kind of pulled us back into the pandemic versus helping us look forward. Great, great observations. Thank you. Amberly. There we go. Um, thank you. I, I agree with um, what uh, Sarah and Nate mentioned. Um, in addition, I would just say the most important thing coming in the, the next few months will be timing and anticipation of that consumer demand and um, reaching that need before it reaches the peak. And Puerto Rico is well on its way to doing that. Um, it's definitely a balancing act of risk and reward and really having our strategy and our assets ready. Um, and it will be critical to have that speed to market, which we're well positioned to do ahead of any of the competitors. In terms of um, avoiding, I would say some destinations have rushed ahead of the moment, really appearing too prematurely. And, uh, and still declaring that need for health and safety is going to be important for us. Going back to what you mentioned, Leah, in terms of targeting that conscientious traveler is going to be really important for the destination. Excellent. So often new best practices emerge following a crisis. In each of your respective disciplines, whether it's digital, media, creative, earned media, and public relations, what are best practices and or trends that you see as a result of the, the past year? And, and I'll start this time with you, Amberly. Thank you. Um, I would say in terms of messaging, one of the things that we learned was to really remain empathetic to what our audiences were going through. We wanted to ensure that we were tapped into what they needed. Are they ready to travel? How do they want to be inspired? And Discover Puerto Rico was very intentional in bringing the island into people's homes with recipes and music and keeping them connected to the culture in the early stages. And throughout the entire pandemic, we were able to really get to know our consumers on a much deeper level. Um, and then as things shifted, um, once we started to invite them back in a safe way, we, we still were able to hearken back to that empathy piece, really being mindful of our messaging sequencing um, throughout the entire pandemic. And then from a traditional media perspective, obviously we partnered with Miles um, on the uh, digital side of things. But to your point earlier, we were very mindful of making sure we were targeting in our traditional media the conscientious travelers. So we wanted to target people who were searching for hand sanitizer or masks or being really specific in how we were trying to reach people to come back to the island. Um, so that's what I would say on, on that piece. Absolutely, I think uh, you hit the, the nail on the head. The, the meeting travelers where they are truly became sort of a battle cry or a cornerstone of our marketing strategy throughout the past year. And that's something that doesn't have to go away and, and shouldn't go away as, as we emerge from the pandemic. Um, Nate, do you wanna weigh in? Yeah, I mean, I would build off of that looking you know, really at digital. Um, and what, what came out of this uh, was really a, some DMOs and certainly Discover Puerto Rico, but embracing this idea that digital and uh, marketing in general uh, has changed in terms of where the DMO needs to sit. So in addition to creating all this inspiration, that uh, validation and direct um, factual information that is ultimately required to build consumer confidence to push people over the edge 
um, suddenly became the role of the DMO. And generally, like there's so many other you know sources out there, and it, it's just not viewed. But due to the crisis, um, you know, the DMOs had to take a role in both marketing and in their own channels to really instill that confidence and ensure consumers understood what precautions were being taken, what protocols were. And I really think that the job Discover Puerto Rico did when we look at the engagement on, you know, the travel advisory pages and so forth over the course of the pandemic helped set the stage to give consumers the confidence to actually start activating once we were able to invite them in. Um, the other thing I think, um, which is not really a choice that was made by uh, any of us in the marketing world, but because everyone was locked in their house, one of the byproducts of that was a further consolidation of the dominance of Google, Facebook, and Amazon, uh, which is often referred to as like the triopoly in digital marketing. And now more than 50% of all ad spend globally goes through those three platforms because people were locked at home ordering unnecessary products and searching Facebook endlessly um, and, and searching for destinations. And so combining sort of that need to have really industry leading best practices specific to those channels with the need to get comp, um, content that is really aimed at both inspiring and creating consumer confidence is a lesson I think we've taken to heart coming out of this and a real focal point for, for moving forward. I think you're you're absolutely right. It, it was interesting above just building confidence. Um, there were even times the DMO had to play a role in letting people know they couldn't and shouldn't travel to the island. I think that was a, a big learning experience for most of us in the DMO marketing space, um, figuring out how to uh, responsibly message to people that they shouldn't travel. Hope we never have to do that mm -hmm. again, but certainly the DMO's role evolved in the, the past year, no doubt. Sarah? Yeah, specifically in the earned media space, we have to prepare for the fact that news on demand is not going anywhere. So we had to quickly adapt to the fact, right, that meetings uh, in person and interviews in person could not happen. So specifically in the broadcast journalism space, they used to reject anything that wasn't in person or sometimes even shot by their own production crews. And now that they've realized the value of these remote web interviews that you can do anytime. I mean, we, I know we all embrace Zoom, we all embrace Teams, but the fact that broadcast journalism has had to do that as a news gathering tool as well has been breakthrough and we don't feel that's going anywhere. So, you know, as a destination and as a travel brand, if you're able to provide really great quality visuals, really great content that's not easily obtained by media, uh, you'll see a lot more traction for those assets. You know, those destinations that created virtual newsrooms, that trained spokespeople to be able to easily adapt uh, to virtual interviews and experiences. Those are the ones that we saw increase, you know, a, a great deal, their share of voice. And we saw that with Discover Puerto Rico as well. Those are really great points too. I, I definitely think some of those trends are, are here to stay. And, and to that point, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, Discover Puerto Rico did take very quick and decisive actions early in the pandemic to really safeguard the tourism economy. Through a number of various tactics, we kept Puerto Rico top of mind for the right time when people would begin to travel again, which appears to be now. Um, from these strategies and tactics, what do we see stays the same? I, I think I had a, a, a slide that said, you know, let's keep doing what is working. You know, what are those things that, that stays the same? What remains but evolves? So we, we see that changing as a result of the pandemic. And what do you see are completely new opportunities um, that Discover Puerto Rico should be considering as we move forward? Nate, you want to start with that one? Sure. Um, so what, what stays the same from before in my mind is the value of face-to-face. -face. Um, that, that has not been lost. Well, we found ways to enhance that and ways to work around that. I think when we look at our own businesses and our ability to generate truly new relationships that lead to business, particularly in the group space, um, that, that part stays the same coming out of this. Um, I think what you know, uh, builds off of what is the same and evolves is, is the commitment a destination needs to make to inspiration and storytelling. So while media was 
stopped and health and safety messaging became top priorities. I really believe that why Discover Puerto Rico and, and the island has set itself up so well for recovery is that we never stopped finding responsible and contextual ways to, to generate that desire. So whether it was like the virtual vacays or the adopt a Koki or the sounds of PR series, these were things that met consumers where they were and really combined that proactive role of, you know, community health and safety with ultimately something that never went away, which was a desire to, to travel. Um, what I think is really new coming out of it, what's totally new is looking at um, some of the markets in different ways. And, and Amberly touched on this, but we have an opportunity, some short term and some longer term um, with some different markets. So Boomers um, was alluded to earlier. That is an opportunity where we don't normally look with Discover Puerto Rico. Also, US-based international travelers. A lot of data shows US travelers who traditionally um, take an international trip every year are not going to. And Discover Puerto Rico is really well positioned to be a domestic international experience in that way. So I think we need to find specific targeting there. And the final is looking at how we can pick off market share based on how our competitors have changed their own marketing. So uh, a lot of destinations on the um, uh, landlock side or on the domestic side, like Florida, California, they're implementing a concentric circle approach to their recovery, which means they're actually leaving out some of the really key national audiences that we compete with them in, the New Yorks, the Chicagos, those sort of markets. So there will actually be additional audience share available for a period of time. And we really want to look at whether it makes sense to potentially double down in some of those markets um, to take share of voice. So th those are a couple things that I see in terms of um, new opportunities or what isn't the same anymore. And, and that's an excellent point on the, the, the market selection in, in a place that we do have an advantage. Puerto Rico never had a drive market. So there's nowhere for us to start from in terms of, uh, you know, sort of a bullseye target and then expanding outwards. We have stuck with um, the majority of our priority markets, of course, filtering in for COVID cases and, and air seat capacity. But I think that brings up a really good point that we've been able to stay engaged with some of those bigger uh, scale MSAs where uh, a lot of the um, mainland destinations, you mentioned California, Florida, uh, they're, they're starting more with a drive market approach. So um, definitely well positioned for that one. Sarah, do you want to jump in? Yeah. So to, to add to that, I feel health and safety of travelers and locals, it'll remain, but it's, it's becoming table stakes, right? So we all need to keep that in mind. So much like it's very difficult to remember a life pre TSA, right? And, and travel pre 9-11, it will be a bit difficult to imagine a life pre-COVID for many of us when it comes to travel. So, you know, travel destinations and brands, you won't be able to differentiate yourself through health and safety, but it's definitely going to continue to stay and remain very important and be table stakes. So we all have to continue to check that off. And then virtual will evolve, you know, virtual will remain, but evolve. So while nothing will ever replace, of course, you know, the true experience of immersing yourself in a destination, travelers are going to continue to expect to be able to preview these amazing experiences from the trap, you know, from the comfort of their home. So this is a big reason why you know, we're exploring with Discover Puerto Rico, this concept of try before you fly a little bit. So in the retail space, you have try before you buy and we've seen brands like Amazon test it out and we feel we have a huge opportunity as a destination to be one of the first to be able to through the acceptance of virtual be able to lure potential travelers in and drive them to book as an immediate follow-up through this concept we're exploring with Discover Puerto Rico in the sense of try before you fly so we feel that's a huge opportunity there. I think those are great points. Just don't say the word virtual vacay to the Discover Puerto Rico marketing team. I think they, they still have PTSD from, from 22 <laughs> virtual engagements. <laughs> um, Amberly? Yeah, just to add on to that a little bit, I would say from what I believe would stay the same um, for us, it's really that deep understanding of the consumer and what they need and 
how we're going to continue to differentiate Puerto Rico, not just by those functional elements of proximity and no passport required, but what are those emotional benefits, those cultural and meaningful experiences um, that we can continue to tap into. From what evolves, um, we've, we've talked about it, it's aligning that value aligned visitor with what the, um, the destination has to offer. And while we know that research has said that Americans will take three to four trips this year, the reasons for those trips are going to vary, whether it's personal escape, reconnection with family and friends or exploration. Um, and the more we as the destination aligns with those visitor values, the likelihood we can meet those visitors um, and qualify them for multiple trips and repeat visitation. Um, in terms of opportunities as we move forward, I think hearkening back to knowing our audiences on this deeper level mm -hmm. and kind of letting them lead us, um, giving us insights into the future in terms of what type of content do they want to receive? How can we align our creative and marketing messaging and put them in the, the right channels as Nate and I have both spoken about um, for them to receive that message um, as well. And then finally, I 100% agree with Nate um, in terms of the opportunity with um, international travel and Puerto Rico is, is very well positioned to be able to capitalize on that right now, um, given the nature of our ability to travel outside of the country. Excellent, agree completely. Um, we've talked a lot about responsible travelers and how important that is. And Discover Puerto Rico really led the DMO industry in terms of establishing a responsible traveler strategy amid COVID-19. And I think as we've discussed, um, I think that will continue beyond COVID-19. In your opinion, how has this really primed the destination to come back bigger and better? And what kind of key takeaways would you share from this approach? Sarah? Yeah. So from an earned media perspective, we feel that having kept journalists and influencers up to date constantly during COVID as a destination and being extremely transparent with them at every step of the way really primed us as we emerged. You know, being one of the first destinations to have strict lockdowns and, you know, tell them not to travel as difficult as it was for many of us really earned us credibility among this influential group, right? When you, when you think about journalists, when you think about influencers, there are a group of incredible third-party advocates that you want on your side. So ensuring that transparency and communicating that very responsible travel message early on gave us permission to immediately shift now the communications that we need and elevate the island's proactivity as demand drastically increases. So that was you know, definitely an incredible learning. We knew it was the right approach, but it really primed us to emerge very quickly. And we're seeing in research that consumers are not ready to drop all of those health and safety uh, standards as soon as COVID is over or, or as we continue to evolve out of it. So um, definitely something we plan to keep in our messaging. Nate, thoughts? Um, I don't want to repeat too many thoughts, but I think it, building on that, uh, you know, what we did was take a step that normally is very uncomfortable for, for destinations and marketers, which is to start putting sort of value judgments in some ways around people's personal beliefs into our targeting. Um, and that's, that's uncomfortable, but it was, it was almost irresponsible not to do that if we were going to honor like the commitment of the Puerto Rican government, the commitment of the Puerto Rican people to do what they could do for the health and safety of the community. Like, we had to take a stand, not taking a stand was in a way taking another stand. So I think um, like the, the motivations there, now we can apply to other things. So how do we apply that same sort of targeting to people who truly want to travel for the betterment of um, uh, the place that they are going? How do we find people who are more likely to want to go to places that are undiscovered and therefore help develop the island's economy through dispersal? Um, so that sort of proactive um, kind of thought and issue-based um, analysis of visitor markets, I actually think is a real uh, positive takeaway that we got out of this and really positions us um, well, and I do think, you know, I've just read something about how based on how splintered the country is in many ways, we're going to end up with what, what I heard referred to as islands and oases 
um, related to uh, vaccination rates, related to health and safety. And so that's something that we're going to need to take with us as we look at markets, because there's going to be wide swaths of the country that are really well vaccinated, that are embracing safe protocols. And there are going to be others where we're going to continue to see communal spread. And so we're going to have to constantly look at those markets and how they are doing well after um, we come out of sort of the current wave. That's an interesting uh, concept, and I think you're you're right on um, that. That's something we've kind of seen throughout the pandemic. Now we're putting words words to it. Um, Amberly, anything to add? Um, they they uh, took my answer for the most part, but just one thing to share is that you know I think those alignment of those shared values over time are going to help us overcome things such as price sensitivity in the future, and just become and and help. Puerto Rico become and build a more resilient and sustainable tourism product than we ever have before. So if we continue on that path um, of building back better and really focusing who we're targeting, we're in uh, really awesome shape. Great, great points. I think that's uh, about it for the time that we have scheduled for today. So thank you to all three of you for participating in, in the discussion and also course, for your amazing contributions throughout the, the last year slash three years. And of course, everything you've contributed to the, the document. Um, we're very, very appreciative of our continued partnerships with, with your agencies. Um, on, the, on the last slide here, you have some information to reach out to me directly if you want any um, more information or if you have any questions or would like to take a deeper dive. Um, tomorrow, we'll have the full document released through email and through our industry portal where you can dig in yourself and we'll be continuing to roll out um, more details as we get into our industry update in April and additional and subsequent meetings that the, the DMO is going to share through webinars. So thank you all for participating today and for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.